Hello and welcome back. I hope you have seen my uh, videos on introduction to economics and uh, economic entities. So today in this video, we are going to deal with uh, another chapter and the title of the chapter is basic problems of an economic. Problems is a very familiar word to all of us because in our life, uh, each one of us have some problems or other and uh, how we solve these problem is actually important for us. So what we do as a human being, we first try to find out the cause of the problem. And once we know the cause of the problem, we solve the problem in our own way. Today in this chapter, I'm going to tell you about the basic problems or the common problem that all the world or all the economies faces. So if we talk about economies like uh, developed economies like USA, or if we talk about uh, underdeveloped economies of uh, like Africa or developing economy like India or uh, Sri Lanka, then the point is that all these economy, whether they are developed economy, whether they are underdeveloped or whether they are developing, all these economy find some common problem. And in this chapter, we are going to deal with those common problems. We are not going to deal with uh, some specific problem that any particular uh, country or any particular economy faces. For example, suppose if I am talking about Indian economy, then if we talk about our own country, then you know very well that our country deal with many problems, problems like problem of poverty, problems of unemployment, problems of inequalities. So there are many problems that is in and around or that is there in our economy. The thing is that we are not going to deal with poverty in this chapter. We are not going to discuss about unemployment or inequalities. What we talk about is the common problem that all the economies of the world face or find. Okay, so today uh, we will uh, deal with this. So let me start with the chapter and uh, just show you that what are the common problem that all the economies of the world face, right? So before we start, uh, there is one picture and I hope you all can see this picture. Uh, as you can see here, that is, uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, this, he is a person who is standing and he has three options. The first option is flee, he can uh, run away from that. Uh, second option that he find is to stand and uh, get the get swept out uh, to see he will be drawn and the third option that he find is to learn to surf so therefore what we find whenever we find any problem we have some options available and it is up to us that how we are uh, how we choose or select that option so that option selection of that option is go is going to save our life so that is what actually this entire chapter deals with and i will be uh, explaining you uh, that what are the problems that economy faces and how they come out from that problem right so as you can see here uh, in the introduction it is written that any economy of the world whether it is the economy of some developed country or whether it is an economy of underdeveloped country they face some common problem and what we have seen economists have categorized these problem under three uh, three headings or we we sometimes say that these problems are there are three central problems of an economy so you can see here these are the three common problem that all the economies whether they are developed or underdeveloped they find and what are these the first problem is what to produce and how much to produce the second problem that we face is how to produce and the third problem that we face is for whom to produce so these are the three central problem that all the economy whether it is indian economy us economy australian economy european economy asian economy all the economy they face this these three uh, problem as as in common so therefore it is important for us to discuss so what we will do we will first uh, uh, study about these problem and then we will find out the cause uh, for the problem and then we'll see that how the economy try to solve right so i'm going to my next slide as you can see here the next slide uh, what what to produce and in what quantity that means how much to produce uh, the first point tell us that this problem has two aspect the word what has two meaning here the first meaning is what possible commodity to produce so the one one of the basic problem uh, before any economy is to decide that what type of good to produced in the economy what type of commodity to produced in the economy right and the second problem once they decide that how much uh, what commodity to be produced then the second problem is how much of that commodity to produce so that the resource should not get wasted you know very well that no commodity can be uh, produced without the uh, without using the resource and we know 
from the very beginning uh, as i was telling you uh, in the chapter number 1 uh, where I, where i told you the scarcity definition of uh, uh, economics where i told that according to the robinson uh, the, that is the uh, there is a scarcity of resources in our economy so since we know there is a scarcity of resource so therefore we have to produce the commodity in such quantity so that the resource should not get wasted so therefore uh, the question become very important for us what to produce and how much to produce so hope you are getting my point uh, or my idea regarding what to produce and how much to produce right so let us see the second point as you can see here we will further go little deep into the topic and we'll try to understand that why uh, all the economy has to face this problem the second point is every economy has to decide what commodity are to be produced and in what quantity because more production of one commodity would force us to withdraw the resource from the production of other commodity this is a very important line to explain as you know as i was telling that the resources are scarce in nature and because of this scarcity of the resource if we involve lot of resource loss lot of vital resource in the production of only one good then the other goods that we may required or that is important for us we may not get that good or we may not produce that good because our resources are completely involved in the production of some other good so that is why uh, it is important for us to decide that what commodity to produce and in what quantity it should be produced similarly i have taken one small example as you can see here i have taken example of a consumer goods and capital good so consumer goods are nothing but uh, these are the good that is directly used by the consumer Uh, for the satisfaction of one whereas capital goods are the machines uh, tools and the machine that is used uh, in the uh, further production process right so i repeat again i told that just uh, look into the example so the economy if you take into consideration our economy or if i give it uh, from the point of our economy then indian economy or our country has a choice choice between production of consumer good and the production of capital good so consumer goods if the con economy produces consumer goods then the consumer goods like shoes uh, then uh, food these are consumer good that is directly uh, demanded by the consumer and consumed by the consumer but if we are talking about capital good if the economy choose to produce capital good then they are producing tools that is the machinery that further help in the process of production now the question is that if the if the economy produces more of consumer good in the present uh, using the resource completely in the production of consumer good uh, sacrificing or i may say that is uh, on the cost of capital good then uh, the present generation of the economy is going to enjoy a lot but the future generation is going to suffer so if we now Uh, use our resource in the production of only consumer good not thinking about the capital good what will happen in the future the future generation may not get the uh, good because the machines are machines will not be available for them so that shows that why it is important for us to decide that how much amount of good is to be produced and what type of good is to be produced right so as i was telling you that uh, when uh, as a as a human being when we face problem we first try to find out the cause so what you can what you can find from here so one thing that i find from here that uh, this problem of what to produce and how much to produce is basically uh, arises because of to uh, because of scarcity of resource or because of the uh, human wants are unlimited because we demand lot of lot of uh, uh, things in in our life and there is a diversification in our demand i hope you all remember these point where i told that human wants are unlimited and uh, human wants are diversified so because of this the producer or the economy has to decide that what commodity to produce and uh, the find so therefore we see that these are the cause now the question is how to find out the solution to this so i will give you one small example so that you can understand that how the decision of what to produce is taken so let us uh, think like this let us imagine that there is a small plot of land available right and the two option for a producer is that he can use that plot of land for wheat cultivation or he can use that plot of land for setting up an alcohol industry right now the question is what should he do whether he should use that land for the wheat cultivation or whether he should use the land for uh, setting up the al uh, alcohol industry right okay so uh, yes uh, i'll continue with my example uh, again because there was a small uh, disturbance so as i was telling you that uh, a small example where i was telling that suppose if there is a piece of a land available 
and uh, that land can be used for either wheat cultivation or for alcohol setting up an industry that is going to produce alcohol. Now the question is uh, how the producer is some of you may be uh, thinking that uh, using that plot of land for wheat cultivation is a good option whereas some of you may be thinking that uh, setting up an alcohol industry is going to fetch more profit and therefore it is uh, more profitable uh, from the producer side but actually uh, this is not the solution to this the actual solution is that uh, we have to understand the nature of demand demand uh, in in the market suppose uh, uh, we can think of example like this where uh, i may say that imagine that uh, if uh, in and around the market there is a very high demand of alcohol very high demand of alcohol then definitely uh, fulfilling or definitely looking into the demand the plot of land should be utilized for the alcohol uh, setting up of an industry for the alcohol production because that is going to fetch more uh, benefit or the more profit for the producer on the other hand if the people do not consume alcohol if the, if the society or if the economy or there is a very less demand for alcohol but there is a high demand for uh, consumer to have wheat then in that uh, situation, uh, the producer should take a decision of say, using that plot of land for wheat cultivation. So simply what I want to uh, highlight here or what I want to say here, uh, as you know that economy um, does not take into uh, consideration good or bad because uh, that is what we have seen when I told uh, about utility, that is utility is not concerned with good and bad. So the point is that the solution to this problem, that is what to produce and, how, and in how much quantity can be solved by looking into the nature of demand in the economy that is what what is more uh, demanded in the economy so this is how the economy take the decision of what to produce in the economy looking into the demand uh, demand uh, into the economy right so hope you have understood this uh, problem of what to produce and in what quantity and in what quantity we will move on to the second uh, important and the common problem that is faced by all the economies of the world and that is known as how to produce right how to produce is also known by a name called choice of technique of production we call it choice of technique of production the point is once the economy decide that what are the commodities to produce now another important question that comes come up in front of an economy is to decide that what technique or technology they are going to use to produce that commodity there are two types of technique that is suggested by the economist one is called labor intensive technique and the other is called capital intensive technique so what are these so let us first understand and then i'll go in explaining what to how to produce right so one technique that is called labor intensive technique it is nothing but it is a technique where we use more of labor and less of capital that is less of machinery so more number of labor is used and less number of capital is used to produce the good. So that is one technique or uh, method of uh, producing. There is another technique or method that is called capital intensive technique. What is capital intensive technique? It is a technique where we use more of machines and less of labor. So to be simple, you just remember that labor intensive technique where we where is a technique where we are using more of labor and less of capital. And capital intensive technique is a technique where we use more of capital and less of labor. So therefore, the question before an economy is that which type of technology or technique they should use in order to produce the selected good. So it depends completely on some important factors. It's not that uh, uh, economy can decide of its own. It's not that the US economy or the Indian economy can decide of its own that what type of technique they should use. They decide looking into some important factor and that factors are the first factor is relative abundance of factor abundance that which type of uh, which whether labor is abundant or whether capital is abundant so we have before we decide the technique we have to look into the economy that whether in our economy more of labor is uh, available or more of machines or the technology is available so if uh, if we are talking about an economy like india so if we talk about an economy like india we know that we have a, a huge strength of labor the strength of the labor in our economy is huge whereas technologically we are not so advanced so therefore for an economy like india where the technology is not so advanced it is better to use labor intensive technique or uh, for a uh, underdeveloped economy definitely you will see that for uh, underdeveloped economies they use labor intensive technique because uh, labors are uh, abundantly av available in the economy but if we talk about economy like usa 
so they are they are technologically very advanced but they have less number of labor available so for them it is better to use capital intensive techniques so therefore if when the economy will decide on the uh, that which type of technique should be used they are going to look into one very important factor and that is abundance of factor which factor is more so that is what and at the same time they are also going to look into the second important factor as you can see on the screen i am pointing out relative cost of factor that means if i'm using the labor how much cost i have to bear for that and if i'm using capital how much cost i'm bearing for the capital so the the factor that is cheaply available that will be the best technique to be used for the production of the commodity because if i'm going to use the technique which is cheaply available for me my cost of production is going to reduce and that is what actually the efficiency mean so efficiency efficiency in the production means that with minimum cost i can produce maximum so these are the two important factor that the economy has to take into consideration before deciding that what type of technique or technology they should use in order to produce the selected commodity hope you are uh, getting my point so i've taken one small examples also here that you can see here cloth can be produced either by using hand looms or and a little amount of capital hand looms that is a uh, with the with hands and uh, or with some small some um, tools and the machinery or by using modern machine with less amount of labor so there are two options of producing cloth either i can use more of labor and less capital or i can use uh, uh, more machines and less so the but the point is that which technique i will be using that depend completely on the its availability and that depend on the cost of uh, relative cost of the factors so hope you are getting the point so this is the second uh, central problem that every economy of the world face right so we are going to go for the third to in order to discuss the third central problem that every economy of the world face as you can see here one of a very interesting picture and uh, you can uh, identify from this picture what do i mean i mean you can see here this is a poor person who, who, who there are two poor person and they have nothing to eat whereas uh, here there is one very big fellow and uh, on uh, in his both hand he is having a, a big uh, miss is having a big uh, slice of pizza so therefore uh, he is rich and so he is getting maximum whereas the, they are poor so they are left with nothing so that is what actually uh, shows uh, our third or where that is what actually the third problem we have to talk about here for whom to produce let me read the point and then i will be uh, explaining you the concept the point is the third basic problem is the problem of distribution of the produced among the various individual or factor of production this is also known as problem of allocation of resource right and these are uh, this is one example so the third central problem before any economy of the world is to decide about the distribution of the uh, output so the output that is produced in an economy now we have to for every economy the headache is how to distribute the good among its people or among the group so how to distribute the uh, output that is being produced therefore we are seeing that the third central problem is also known as problem of allocation of resources or problem of distribution so this is the third for example i have taken a, a small example suppose a farmer produces 10 tons of wheat so the wheat that is produced in an economy now the question is how the distribution will be done how much uh, share that each and every factor of production is going to get because you know in order to produce any goods factors of productions are required uh, and uh, according to the traditional economist there are four factors of production land labor capital and organization organization so they they have their own shares so the point is how much uh, the each and every factor of production is going to get how much of that share suppose uh, this 10 tons of wheat let us do not convert this into uh, money value let us just imagine that this 10 tons of wheat so how what will be the share of uh, uh, land uh, in in the cultivation because land has uh, contributed something in the production of wheat similarly labor the laborer they have also uh, contributed uh, something in the production of wheat so what should be their sh uh, share therefore uh, machines they have also contributed so what should be their share and finally the organizer organizer so the, what should be their uh, share that is profit so this problem of distribution 
distribution is the third central problem that every economy of the world uh, find and therefore we also sometimes say that this is a problem of distribution of national income so hope you are you are uh, getting my point so these are the three uh, common problem that every economy of the world face whether they are uh, a poor country whether they are rich country everyone and we see here there, there are two further distribution of this functional distribution and personal distribution so that is what uh, so these are the three problems and as i was telling that uh, we will uh, try to find out the cause of these problem so all the three problem that you have seen is basically due to three reason and we have discussed many a time that the there are three uh, point human wants are unlimited i hope now you uh, remember completely in my uh, first video uh, i told you what do human wants are unlimited means resources are limited and alternative use of resources so now you can uh, connect now you can connect this chapter with the first chapter and you can find out why, when i was talking about the robinson definition that is also called scarcity definition of economics we have talked about this we have talked about uh, human wants are unlimited resources are scarce and alternative uses of re uh, resources so these are the basic cause of the three central problem that every economy of the world face so let us quickly see let us quickly so human wants are unlimited as i told some of the important thing that our want never satisfied when one want is satisfied uh, another want uh, comes up so that is what actually we say human wants i told that human wants are recurring in nature so once it is satisfied that means uh, forever it will be satisfied it is not again and again it uh, come come up so i have given you the example of food so um, the food that we eat in the breakfast after some point of time again we feel hungry again we eat after some point again we feel hung hungry and again we eat so it is recurring it is uh, taking place again and again and of course human wants also changes with time so if we are talking about uh, to understand uh, about human wants then we can say that human want also changes with time if we are, if i talk about say if i talk about 50 years back or 60 year back there was a there was no mobile phone available in the uh, in the economy so therefore there was no demand for the mobile phone by anybody but in today's time mobile phone has become uh, one of the important demand of a consumer so with the, you can see that a country like india we have crossed 100 crores of mobile phone connections in india that shows that what is the demand of mobile phone in today's time so in uh, early days there were many commodities which were not de usually demanded by the people but in present time there is a demand for the uh, commodity so the change with time the demand are also changing so that is what we can say one point regarding the human want and of course we have also talked about this i told human want differ in their urgency so the most urgent want will be fulfilled first and then the less urgent want will be fulfilled later on so that is what actually human want but uh, the conclusion is that this is one of the cause of the problems in an economy uh, as you see here limited resource this is also something that we have discussed i told that uh, limited resource is the second uh, important cause of uh, all the problems what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce because it's only these problems are only because there is a scarcity of resource if we if we would have a sufficient amount of resource available for all of us then the problems uh, would not arise so that is why we are saying that scarcity of resources and uh, we have discussed about the scarcity of resources in the first video also so i'm not going into a, a more uh, discussions of this top point and of course we have also discussed this called uh, alternative uses of resource as i was telling that the, once the resource is used for one purpose cannot be used for the another purpose at the same time and that is why we have to uh, take decision of using the resource in the most efficient manner right please note my word i am saying that the economy has to decide using the resources in the most efficient manner so that by uh, giving less of effort i can produce more in the economy so that is the reason that why sometimes we say that uh, this problem that is this problem of deciding that how the resources should be used and uh, how to make the best use of resource is also known as 
प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इकोनोमाइजिंग ऑफ रिसोर्स इकोनोमाइजिंग मीन्स हाउ टू यूज द रिसोर्स इन द बेस्ट पॉसिबल मैनर सो देर फोर वी हैव टू टेक इन टू दिस कंसिडरेशन आई हैव टेकन द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड आई हैव टेकन द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ पीस ऑफ अ लैंड आई होप आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिकॉज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज अ इंपॉर्टेंट रिसोर्स एंड इट इज अप टू अस दैट हाउ वी आर यूजिंग द रिसोर्स इन द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन द बेस्ट पॉसिबल मैनर राइट सो दिस इज वॉट अबाउट द सेंट्रल प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एन इकोनॉमी वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद टू मोर टॉपिक here that is economic growth and economic development right so uh, let us quickly understand what is economic growth and economic development means so just have a look i'll read the point first and then i will explain economic growth generally means an increase in the national income or per capita income over time the essence of economic growth is the increase in the average availability of goods and services so as to bring about improvement in the standard of living of the uh, country so what is the concept of economic growth growth means nothing but economic growth means increase in the national income of the country or increase in the average income of the country in simple word if i explain growth then economic growth means if the income of the average income or if the income of the people in the economy increases or rises up then that then we will say that the economy is growing so that means uh, as you know uh, there are some statistics i'll tell you some statistics and on that basis i will try to explain you economic growth so average income means what first we have to understand the concept of average income so how we calculate average income average income is calculated as the income of the entire country divided by the population of the country so imagine that the total income that uh, an economy generate is 10000 and there are 10 people and there are 10 people in the economy so uh, therefore the average income of that economy is how much 10000 by 10 so 10000 by 10 that means 1000 rupees so we assume like this that each and every people is earning uh, on an average 1000 uh, rupees so that is what actually the concept of average income so according to some statistics it is told that in india the average income or the per capita income is around uh, 1400 dollars whereas for a, U, a country like us or for a country like britain their average income is around 50000 uh, so you can uh, just see the difference uh, for our country we are getting the average income around 1400 whereas they are uh, earning around 50000 so that is a huge uh, difference between the um, average income of the uh, our country and the average income of the country so hopefully i remember the uh, i do not remember the data exactly but i'm just giving you an approximation so that shows that we are uh, lagging too much and because of the less money that we have in our hand so therefore our the lifestyle or the standard of living is also poor yes or no we cannot afford we cannot afford going to uh, uh, very costly places or going to a vacations going uh, we cannot afford um, uh, high standard of living what we see that the people in the other other country like us and britain they enjoy so it's only because our average income is less so the point is we will say that the growth there is a growth or we will say that indian economy is growing when the average income will increase from 1400 dollar to say some higher value so if the average income is every year if it is rising by 1000 dollar then that is the uh, that is the point where we are going to say that the indian economy is growing so hope you are now getting the concept what is growth means so growth simply means rise in the income of the people and we assume that when income of the average income will rise the people will enjoy a good standard of living they are going to have good food that is the balance right they are going to uh, take care of their health they are going to have a proper education they are going to uh, get employed so that is what actually the growth is going to bring right and the point is so this is what the uh, point of uh, economic growth there is a criticism also that uh, why we do not take uh, growth uh, as a, a proper indicator of uh, development uh, so if the average income is uh, uh, rising uh, we cannot say that yes the welfare of the people has also increased so what i'm what i'm trying to say please children try to understand what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say that if the average income of the economy increases as i was telling that right now presently we are having a average income of 1400 dollar or around it so if if the average income of india increase to say uh, 3000 dollar or 5000 dollar does it guarantee that the welfare of the people has in increased definitely not 
and I'll explain you afterward that why I'm saying that rise in the average income is not a guarantee of the increase in the welfare. Okay, for time being, uh, it's not important for us. For time being, what is important for us to understand the concept of economic growth. And I hope we have understood that economic growth is nothing but rise in the average income of the uh, people in the economy. Right? We'll go for one more uh, concept here, and the concept is about economic development. And when we talk about economic development, economic Economic development also mean rise in the average income but it is not only concerned with a rise in the average income but it is also concerned with some basic problems some particular problems that the economy face and that is a problem of poverty that is a problem of inequality and the problem of unemployment so economic development when we are talking about economic development economic development is a concept where we see that the economy is developing economy is developing if if i take the example of indian economy so i will say that indian economy is developing when the econ average income that is the per capita income is rising and at the same time poverty inequality and unemployment is reducing so that is a what we are talking about development so hope now you can understand the uh, between the growth and development so I'll say Indian economy is growing when average income is rising and I'll say that Indian economy is developing when uh, not only average income is rising but with rise in average income poverty income and un un unemployment reduces so that makes the uh, quite a difference between uh, the two concept growth and development and as you can see here the last slide uh, this is a slide that makes the distinction between economic growth so as I was telling growth growth means rise in per capita income whereas development means uh, not only rise in per capita income but reduction in poverty inequality and unemployment so this is the first difference second since we are taking only uh, average income into economic growth so therefore we say it is a smaller concept or a narrower concept whereas in economic development we are not only taking average income but we are taking uh, unemployment inequality and poverty so that is a broader concept so this can be the second difference that we have uh, in economic growth we are saying that growth is a quantitative concept why we are saying quantity concept quantitative means something that i can measure and we know per capita income or income can be measured so therefore we are saying that growth is a quantitative measure but if you look into the development so in development poverty is there inequality is there and unemployment is there so the point is that there are some some not only this not only income inequality and unemployment there is also law and order peace in the country so these all comes under economic development but the point is can we measure law and order is there any technique to measure law and order is there any technique to measure uh, social peace or uh, that is the domestic violence no so therefore we see that economic development is both quantitative as well as qualitative so here you can see the word qualitative is also mentioned so this makes the uh, second difference between actually what is quantitative and qualitative so i hope you are getting my point uh, coming on to the fourth difference, we are seeing that uh, economic growth is the problem of uh, de uh, developed country, whereas development is a problem of underdeveloped and developing country. So these are few uh, difference that you can go through to find out the difference between economic growth and development. In case you are having any doubt with any of the point when we are going to meet in the class, I'll explain you each and every point and uh, we will discuss on the problems that you find, right? And okay, so uh, lastly, if I come here, then you can see here, we are saying that economic growth can be measured with help of per capita income, whereas in order to measure development, we use some techniques like HDI, Human Development Index. I'll tell you uh, afterward, what is the HDI? And PQLI, Physical Quality of Life Index. This concept, HDI, it was given by uh, Indian economist, that is uh, Amartya Kumar Sen, and uh, one of the Pakistani economist, Mehboob ul -Haq. So both of them together, they have given the concept of HDI, and this is a technique by which we can measure or compare the development of the two economy or two countries or even more than two countries so that is what so these are nothing so don't get it confused these are just the technique and it is not there in our syllabus but still uh, we can talk about this that these are the technique uh, that can be used to measure development whereas per capita income is a technique to measure growth so hope you are going to uh, like this video and uh, uh, we will continue further with some more videos on some more chapters thank you